this is James Gardner, the Sydney Tech Geek, and in this great video, uh, one of my most popular videos is about uh, what's inside a digital cinema projector. Well, this is the first commercially available laser-based projector on the market. It's a hybrid pro uh, projector, so it actually uses a single blue laser bouncing off a phosphorus reel to actually generate the rest of the spectrum of light. So it's becoming very popular in the uh, uh, consumer market as well. But this is the first uh, commercially digital cinema grade laser. Better quality, an amazing lamp life if you can call it that, or, or light, um, the light source life. So let's have a quick look inside, see how far we can get to have a look at how this new technology works. Here we are. This is the projector with its sides off. Very easy to, to um, actually take apart. It took me probably two minutes bang bang or bang 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 and then the top came off and pretty much you've got access to everything because uh, the top from edge to edge comes off and you can really see what's going on hopefully in the view of the camera you can actually see uh, the different sections I'm going to be pointing out to you first of all I'll, I'll point out the down here which is the uh, secure media area that's where this, the uh, integrated media block or integrated media server as they are now called. I'll just show you the one for this here. And that slides into the side there. And on this is basically where you have some hard drives in these slides. And uh, behind this um, uh, gauzed or protected area with this uh, EMF protection and everything is where all the security part is. And actually there's a battery and there's a live little computer in there storing all the security information uh, all the time. You're not allowed to actually unplug these for more than nine months because your battery will probably go and you'll lose your security and the thing will become useless and has to be sent back to the manufacturer. So you want to keep these powered up or batteried up with a special battery if you're going to store them. It's a good thing about it's a good thing to know about digital cinema equipment. You don't want to put it in the cupboard for a year and pull it out and expect it to work. Um, you really need to look after it. So that's the media block goes into here and in there that's also secured and got monitoring on it so every time you touch it or anything from it on it it, it will log it uh, on the system also you need uh, uh, trained and um, certified engineers who know actually how to what's called marriage the equipment so if anyone has touched it or opened it it needs a certified engineer to come in and say yes it's been put together properly and not been fiddled with uh, and that's part of uh, how we keep everything so secure and pirate proof in the digital cinema industry and it is very very pirate proof I can tell you now so here we are in the projector so as before we said we had the basically the brains that controls the projector from NEC and then uh, the media block which was pretty much pretty much completely redesigned by most of the new by the manufacturers uh, when they went to the series 2 projectors uh, the ICP, I think, is some design from N TI, but other otherwise, compared to the Series 1, which was mainly TI, it's pretty much they all have their own sort of implementation, but they're all very similar because they're based on what TI has given them. Um, so here's interesting. This is like a little network hub. Now, there's lots of computers in here. There's, a, there's the Secure Media Block computer. There's the IMS computer. There's, um, you know, there's other parts of this, this projector and they appear to the outside world as one IP and that's done through this board here there's one Ethernet port but and there's a few computers but they appear on one IP through this little box which is basically making them appear as such over here you've got this little board that's the lens control so you've got down here the lens so all the mechanical parts of the lens you know so you can do uh, do lens memory so you can actually automatically get the lens to change to different aspect ratios when you change to different channels now this whole big block here interesting part of these newer generation projectors this has actually got all the prisms etc in here and you can see now that it's a much more modular design usually be a lot more open in the earlier projectors you'd be able to see into it and have a have a bit of a sticky nose but as you can see here it's a lot more difficult but it's not so bad because you don't really want to get into there it's, um, and fiddle with any of that it's much better to be done in a, in, a, in a lab or a proper lab if you actually have to do any modifications to that or even potentially send it back to factory uh, so it's very interesting. You can see actually now how it's a lot more modular than the earlier projectors. Uh, over here, low voltage power supplies by look, looks of it. Uh, you've got two of them there. Um, and then over here, this is the new part. This is the more interesting part. Obviously, it's the 
laser and uh, into you know the laser and phosphoryl part. Now we'll just go over it quickly. There's a massive radiator here with six fans on this side and two fans on this side to keep the air coming for you constantly. There's a uh, water cooled. There's uh, some uh, water, water banks here or liquid cooled liquid banks here, and you can see it going through into three different laser modules. I'm not sure why they have three, but looking at uh, the information about these type of projectors, one blue laser is used for blue, and and then they other use another blue laser to bounce off the phosphorus wheel to generate the yellow light, which you know, so the yellow light's made out of the red and the green. So add it all together, and you get your full spectrum light source. Now, what's this compared to a xenon? Well, it's a little bit lacking in the red, but it looks fine. Uh, to me and, and what I've seen so definitely this is likely to easily do P3 which is what DCI is standard is based and probably even slightly better than what Xenon has done in the past um, but that's hard to say I'm not an expert in that area you really need to talk to someone who actually studies that um, but that's quite interesting so as you can see here um, you, very important is the cooling as you can see by this massive cooling system of lasers, they really need to be kept at the right temperature. You want to keep these projectors or any laser type projector in a very um, temperature controlled environment so that they can keep the lasers at the right temperature because I understand that they do not deal well. The life expectancy can be hit if you overheat them or if they get a little too hot. So you can see here there's one, two, three. If you, if you, I'll take the camera and do some close ups. You've got, see this laser here, you can see it's coming off a mirror, of course. And in here behind you, I'm not going to go any further because I'm not really trained in it. There must be a phosphorus wheel, etc., as well as the blue light coming through. Um, going into, you can basically see still the integrator rod. So pretty much up to the, you know, uh, the old generation digital projectors and, and these new laser-based digital projectors are actually very similar. It's actually the light source that has only changed. So the integrator rod is still there and everything beyond that is pretty much all the same. It's just that how the light is generated. Now, uh, interesting part of, you know, what's the difference between these? Well, one of the reasons people say they're better quality is um, definitely the consistency of light across the screen due to the fact that, uh, like a xenon would usually be, uh, a xenon lamp would usually be placed into the back of the projector or the side of the projector, depending on the brand, and it would have a parabolic dish. So as you've got your little arc going in your lamp up the back here and that parallel dish is used to focus that usually off a mirror here into the integrator rod and the integrator rod's job is to try and make it more consistency so when that comes out it's coming out in exactly the right shape right to go into the prisms and then onto the DMDs and there is a standard or a specification for DCI of how much if your your certain brightness in the middle of the screen there's a plus or minus percentage I don't know what it is off the top of my head uh, on the sides of the screen so there's so there's a bit of a brighter spot than the sides now due to this the laser projector I suppose you can actually more focus and distribute the light coming out of this the consistency of light across the screen is is considerably better than Xeon based projectors so that's a, a good advance in the quality now obviously the main part why we find this industry interesting is because you know, you know this isn't something you're going to be replacing very easily but then again uh, if you have a 14 hour duty cycle on a commercial cinema projector it's typical this has got a five year life expectancy as according to NEC I've had a few competitors um, mentioned that that might not be the case but I find it hard that NEC would um, warranty it for that sort of or give that sort of spec unless it was spot on and it's not like this is that newer technology in terms of using lay blue lasers on phosphor to generate a light it's actually been done for quite a long time for um, the LED manufacturing you know LEDs and other bits and pieces in the industry so but now it's utilized in in cinema and a lot of that reason is because um, the regulations have only just caught up with using this type in cinema even you know this is used to be under laser regulations which was very strict and being anywhere near it needed very strict policies but as no laser is actually you know it's caught making the light but no actually laser is leaving the projector it's just generating a light source it's not actually pushing laser out so need to catch up with the times and it's sort of doing that now with the regulations changing so we're getting a, a big flush of laser technology 
over the next couple of years and this is pretty much the first freely commercial there's other available projectors usually the primary laser projectors from the other manufacturers any seen um, Christie and Barco but they're for huge screens and cost you know three hundred thousand dollars up sort of scenario well this is pretty much um, very cost effective indeed and that's why it's a very interesting projector because um, typically you're you're paid back the extra cost in two to three years worth of use and when this has got a uh, up to 10 year lifespan um, and a five year use between changing of lamps it's 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 sort of there but the other important factor is that uh, you don't need to have as much you know you don't need to t do as much maintenance on this projector you just need to make sure it's clean and it's got no um, uh, build up of dust etc in the projector and you're pretty sweet so you still need to look at them at least once a year but you mainly just to make sure that they've not got any build up or you know to clean them to vac them out if there's any issues with that but so yeah but let's, let, let's have a look at um, the um, uh, the air system on it the air comes in through the back of course there's you can see basically where the filters are here where the filters go is pretty much where the air comes in and there's one filter up the front here goes in there and there's two up the back so obviously um, the air comes in through those portions and then is pushed out through all the other ones so there's a massive set of fans over here to push all the air out and ob obviously to pull pull um, air over these parts of the projector there's a fan here to keep the um, prisms and, and the DMDs cool um, and there's a big fan here to pull air out through the um, low voltage power supplies um, and or just some other interesting aspects of it these these ones here must be of course the signals going to what's called the the uh, formatter boards the formatter boards are on each of the DMDs which basically are like the control boards that make the DMDs draw make the picture and you've got um, two per channel here um, usually the left and right part half of the DMD um, and it's going into the, the media block from the security area here um, so yeah so that's um, uh, a laser blue laser phosphor projector um, and it's quite interesting um, the phosphor reels in here maybe at some later state we'll be able to get and have a look at that phosphor reel if I get the opportunity I'll put a video together but definitely a great new advancement in cinema projection and cost savings for cinema it's got lower power usage and significantly lower heat creation so a big big issue with um, the Xeon lamps they do run quite hot and generate quite a lot of heat and you'll need an exhaust system usually to keep them cool um, with these as you see there's no big funnel on the top because they're not really producing enough heat to what to worry about it and in general what's usually done and which I think is quite good is that um, usually just put this in a projection booth of some sort um, it extracts the air into a cavity and you and basically you just use an air conditioner to cool cool around the projector and potentially just if you're in a small room you just have this ex, uh, push the hot air into the room and then a reverse cycle projector for ex, uh, air conditioner for example um, reverse cycle air conditioner for example keeping the room cool um, this is really good because um, uh, it's actually a good idea if you're reusing the air and the air is kept clean so you you know you're only pulling clean air through uh, a lot of times of some some regional locations especially in the in the along the, the beachfront areas have problems because they're pulling a lot of air into the ex exhaust pulling a lot of air out that air has to come in from somewhere so you've got uh, a build-up of pressure in that room so it, it pulls air in through all the gaps etc and that air is carrying salt and other other aspects of being near a beach and then that's making its way into the projector uh, well that's obviously not good for a projector so that's uh, something that's uh, really nice for for the environmental characteristics of those regional sides you can basically more hermetically seal the projector in a in a room and keeping the air around it cleaner um, anyway that's uh, James Gardner and what's inside a blue laser phosphor digital cinema projector and you'll be seeing these in your home market and commercially too so I hope you find this interesting and then bye for now from James Gardner the Cine Tech Geek. DCP player free get it now from digital.net.au